Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the next session of Dust to Dust, our spoopy mini series here at the Red Hair Inn. Um, welcome, grab a seat and grab a pint, hang out with mm. us while we watch Shelby uh, shake in her chair. Um, but uh, real quick, before we start setting the stage and jump in, um, check out the Red Hair in Discord, come hang out with some really like-minded and awesome and inclusive and accepting beautiful people. Let's talk homebrew and Dungeons and Dragons and stuff we have, you know, in chat role playing. lots of cool things. Um, but let's go ahead and start going around the horn. And of course, as always, we're gonna start with Shelby. Who are you? Who are you playing? Let's do this. Uh, hi guys, my name is Shelby, AKA Wish Warlock, and I'll be playing Jules Devereaux, never scared, always hesitant, um, rogue of the party um you see that she talks to people that are not there and that's always fun and that's Jewel Deborah. Yeah. and i'm rolling my hit dice right now do it lizzie hello i'm lizzie donahue you can find me on social medias at the lizzie ld i will be playing granny sophia tonight this is just an old lady nothing notable here just random powers has been adventuring for longer than she would like to admit and just can't seem to stop <laughs> all righty daniel evening everyone um my name is daniel lieberman known by many people simply as dragon i'm one half of the team at dragon rock rpg design where along with my writing and design partner renee beauregard I create supplemental material for you to use in your games of D&D 5e. You can follow us at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram and at Dragon Rock RPG on Twitter. There's a link tree with links to all of our material there. That's rock spelled R-O-C. There is no K. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the show because really I just want to get into playing my gem dragonborn gloomstalker ranger Kedek Nord. And if my Carrick voice isn't 100% there today, that's because I'm feeling a little under the weather, but I'm still not missing playing with these people. So I look forward to getting into all the chaos tonight. Oh, and there will be, especially because of April and the Jar of Dirt. I should have like made one. I've got plenty of mason jars around here. I should have totally made one. I will maybe at some point. Uh, hi everyone. And my still beating human hearts too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I totally have those laying around. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Real life wish. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name's April Hill. You can find me at stiletto underscore assassin on Instagram, stiletto DM on Twitter. I am playing Calypso. Hi, Lipso, if you put the little emphasis in there. Um, I am a moon druid water genasi witch who does have a jar of dirt with a human heart inside of it. And I just found out that it's some of the town's folks hearts and i don't really sympathize with that because they're evil you can't convince me otherwise uh yeah. but yeah so that's what i do and who i am and all the things so yeah. you also added uh, the ashes of a disintegrated holy person to that jar of dirt you did I did. You did add the ashes of a disintegrated the holy old person. blind uh holy woman from yes. the temple good job i'm proud of you um, so yeah, my name is Taryn, uh, also known as Val Rook across the socials, generally creative human, TTR RPG player, GM, Eldritch Entity, and Dice Maker under the moniker of Umbral Oculus Dice, it's your underscore dice on the Instagram, and of course tonight, I am your very Eldritch story keeper, um, weaving a bit of my spoopy vibes into the beautiful, beautiful world of Ecrium, and with that, we begin. So last session after having laid the bones of this jack to rest you return to the town um granny sophia quickly ditched the party um basically saying i'm tired i don't feel good i'm going back uh you guys go do whatever uh with that the party kind of you know shook it off and decided well we're gonna continue forward. And you went first to the apothecary uh, where you met uh, Leah Grimm, who was this redheaded, 
kind of frail woman you could see in the apothecary shop many goods very traditional herbs and other spices and other things poultices and such a uh, bit of a musty smell began to talk with leah kind of some of you starting to pick up vibes uh through your checks that leah seemed to know a bit more about uh this jack and about uh about arlena's situation um speaking to her you did learn that boris uh wayleaf the mayor of the of deer here of deer hill had indeed um made a pass at arlena and was shot down brutally um but you did take away from leah that her not standing up for her friend was the fact that she didn't want to be included but as you began to reveal details that you had started to piece together there was a rage that you could sense behind this interaction which was not only did leah know of this jack's bones but she was angry that you knew shortly thereafter she offered to make tea went to the back and never returned for you all to only be um taunted by the small girl singing three blind mice to the three of you before leaving the apothecary shop revealing that leah had left out the back pursuing down the alleyway uh one of you thought it was smart to go off and check seeing the small girl standing at the end of the alleyway jules froze and decided to not follow <clears throat> um initially um there may have been screaming involved there was screaming for help involved um the party of course followed the little, the little girl uh who did lead you all to the temple there in deer hill um, arriving, you realize that the matron, dressed in all black, covered head to toe, was blind. But while you thought you were being stealthier, the woman revealed that she was well aware you were there. With your questions and inquiring and other things, she pieced together why you're in town. She pieced together what you were searching for. In, in many ways seem to speak to you all as almost a confession, as some kind of recompense for her past sins, as she was well aware that Arlena was innocent, that she revealed to you that she had been led astray by the words of Boris Wayleaf and his wife, initiating accusations, but having been told the things that she was told about this supposed witch and the things that had been happening in town, young man gone missing, a sick and dying child, her husband had gone missing, buying strange plants, she was convinced that Arlena was a witch. And it was her word that then led the entire village to kill Arlena. It was only shortly after revealing this to you all that the matron disintegrated in front of you into a pile of ash with the little girl standing in the doorway before running away. You found a scroll that was now blank with singe marks implying that it had been a scroll that this child had used. You began to piece together a little bit that perhaps the little girl wanted you to find this story. You then decided to make your way back quietly before it got too late into the night back to the Daybell Inn where you've been staying with the sweetest, most dramatic little halfling. Of course, walking in, you discover Sophia sitting by the fire, sipping tea right next to Dora and we're greeted with the what took you so long. Now, Sophia, you've arrived back to the bed and breakfast. <clears throat> As you come in, do you 
feel free to describe as much as you would like the feelings going through Sophia's mind as she walks back in after having left the party and so Sophia is very much wrapped up in her own head at this moment the last thing she saw was sort of a a ghost of a long lost loved one well actually I guess I don't know how long but a lost loved one helped set free someone else who was also bound and by terrible circumstances probably because of their association with somebody who was who they loved deeply and she she just like weariness is in every line of her body as she walks into that um because she can't help but dwell on her own lost love and just how long they've been apart and how much she sacrificed for that to and yeah how much that has cost her. So. You enter she, in. Yeah. And you can hear the clanging in the kitchen. You can hear the steam from a teapot. Why is that one of you? Uh, yes, it's me, Sophia. Oh, I, it's the one that knows what they're doing. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Is there are like biscuits placed out on the table <laughs> and you can see uh, Dora coming through with a tea kettle and it's odd because there are already two cups set out were you expecting someone I figured most likely you probably no offense at our age roaming around with the crazy whatnot children about is not really something that we do can i insight like do i feel like there's something more going on to that go for it that seems a little overly candy all right that's an 18 plus one 19. that was a lie Um, there's a very knowing look on Miss Dora's face. You know, Miss Dora, I don't think you're being honest with me. These biscuits are very good, though. They are. Uh, they're my mother's recipe. What do you mean I'm not being honest with you? Well, I I don't know what to say except for I, I think that you're a smart one. Well, you don't get as old as us without learning a thing or two about people. I that's true. So no, I've been watching you all quite closely, really. And also I saw you book away from the party and come this way. Do you have magic? Were you scrying? Because you were clearly here making tea. Oh, I I do. Why is it, do you think, that I didn't stop what was happening? Does Granny feel like she's about to have to fight this old lady? (laughs) You are immediately picking up that Granny is telling you in confidence, like, yeah, no, I'm something. Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, obviously, either you could have agreed with what was being done. You oh, didn't no. want to get involved because you that's are really a witch. It. Witch is a strong word. Isn't it, though? It really is. It's very vague and very sexist. At least the way these buggers use it. Right. And perhaps your talents don't lie in a, you know, up to the snuff of turning a whole village that's intent on murdering a woman. I don't have the energy, but poor Arlena was innocent. Yes. 
Do you know what happened to her husband? I do. He burned. Why? I don't know why. But I know that it happened. Do you know why there are graves? Empty graves? Arlena had thought they were dead. People ignored her plight. But truth be told, she was alone for weeks. Convinced she lost it all. When they came for her, she did not even fight. She, she didn't deserve it, truly. And yet, I feel like you're not overly perturbed, which I must Better say. Her than me. Why? I'm near ready to go. Fair enough. But you don't think, well, who's to say whose time it is? But where hey. was her husband? Her husband. That part is the mystery I don't even know. All I know is that after the fire, when I looked, he was there. Uh, well, but I, I didn't think Arlena deserved what fate befell her, but was not my place to step in. I don't mean to be rude, but I just can't help but notice a sort of almost gleeful undertone to what you're telling me. Maybe I'm way off base, but... Some Look. doors close so that others may open. What door opened? One you've not found yet. Hmm? Sorry, what did you say? We were safe. Who was safe? Myself and a few others. Magic users, you see. Mm -hmm. We were safe because of Arlena's sacrifice. Except People began assuming magic users were behind it all. Just because some young man goes missing, a little girl gets sick. So it must be black magic. Mm -hmm. It was a shame. But we were then safe. Then they start blaming curses. Very real. Not so much this one. But. I really don't understand how that's an open door for you, though. It seems like that just makes the water hotter. But now, when things go wrong, it's not our fault. It's the ghost. Now, when the mayor gets bunions because he's sick and he's scum. It's the curse. It's me us. You see? I think I see, yes. Does she really have an affair with the mayor? No. I didn't think so. His wife is actually Quite lovely, physically speaking. Hateful shrew. Very bossy. I'm sure that just makes her fit right in with the mayor. She does she seems to be the only one that can keep him in check. Granted, he does make numerous passes at women 
However, no one would dare. Hamia is quite mean. Have you ever had a partner, Dora? Long ago. He died. Trying to save me. I was going to be burned. You know. This town? Or was this where you landed afterwards? This was where I landed. With some close friends. Started my life over. Began a new mission. At least that's what I told myself. Sounds like you've had it a hard. So have I, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm not allowed to settle down. I have to follow where the wind takes me. Why that voice? Yes, the voice. Very insistent. But I'm rebelling today and not following it. <clears throat> Jin often are. Quite demanding. Yes. And I see you're very stoop. I can sense them. Uh, can you? Yes. They're quite close, you know. Have you made any deals? No. Well, My. not recently. Interesting. It's a long ago. I made my deal pretty long ago. I think I was 15. <laughs> uh, Why, that was long ago then. Yes. And I, if I told her everything that that 15 year old put me through, she'd still do it. Because love makes you an idiot. <clears throat> it does. It will make you blindly follow someone even though their affections are clearly lied elsewhere. You have oh. all their loyalty and yet nothing. That's a curious thing to say. I thought you the person died to save you. I tried again. Ah. Didn't it work out so good. It's a strange arrangement. With who? Some tall, dark, and handsome is beside the point. I'm too old now. Just counting the days, huh? <laughs> so, when do you think you'll all be leaving? Well, in my case, it will be whenever the wind decides I'm done here. And what if I push the wind? For your own sake, I like you. But if you keep meddling, I can promise others will take it so kindly. I thought you didn't have anything to do with that. Hey, not so much. Others? are not so kind as I am. Mm. I recommend you leave. Or what? I'll die. They've done it before. Obviously. And no offense, but you're an odd lot. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> I can only warn you one more time. <laughs> you see, the funny thing is, we all met yesterday. I could relay your warning. I could say we should just move along. And yet I have a feeling we're all just a bit too much already in it. I don't think we, any of us really want to let this go. It is a shame. I do think it's going to get us in trouble. 
going to get you killed. How terrible. Not at best. Well, I must be off for the night. Your friends are coming. Where are you off to? I'm off to bed. Well, I take it your friends were involved in her death. We're a little too old to mince words. And I don't like hurting other people's friends, but I think what's happened here is pretty ghastly. So, if you agree, you could save us some trouble and just name names. Boy, they cut my tongue out. And I'd have every ounce of that coming my way. It would grow back. But that wouldn't be the point. Now, rest easy when traveling. But watch your step. I've lived this long. And Dora gets up and walks back to the stairs up past a wall that has picture frames and mirrors turns down the hallway goes to the room you hear the door close now i will ask you for two checks separate checks i need both a perception check okay and an insight all right perception first um Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm just, I'll just <laughs> let that one stand. Because uh, I don't think uh, Bless could save that one. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a five. Um, and then for Insight, there's another 18. Plus one, 19. Okay, so the Wait, let me, and actually, I want to roll the bless on this one just to get a little extra boost. Yeah, okay. That's the d4. Um, oh, and that's another four. So. Okay, so with that, uh, Dora was actually being very honest um, through all of that conversation. Um, in fact, almost more so at the end. Um, with that high of an insight, yeah, you're definitely picking up on, like, she knows the people that were involved. They are clearly magic users of some kind. They were very aware. Um, but none of that was a lie. With a high insight of that, I will say, whenever you asked Dora to give names, I will allow this because of the high insight roll. Mm -hmm. Her eyes changed color. And went a very verdant green. Like went very green. Is interesting. So <sighs> but her eyes changed colors. And for a brief moment, your brain makes tricks on you, it feels like. But for this brief moment, her face shape was not quite the same. It had almost started to lose itself before returning. So, but that's what I'll give you. And of yeah. course, it is with that that the party returns as you were sitting there. Took you long enough. Is that tea? I it snatch is. it from you and I throw it on the floor. How did you get that? Dora gave it to me. She, you know, it's probably, I've already sipped it. So if you're trying to save me from poison, it's too late, honestly. Are you, do you feel okay? I'm like, 
I'm like touching her. Are, are, are you okay? Do you see everything fine? It's an interesting question. Uh, Do you feel poisoned? I don't feel Make poisoned. a constitution. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's, a, <laughs> it's actually a very nice jasmine tea. It was I mean, a very nice jasmine tea. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's actually, it was honestly a very good quality. Very, I mean, oh, very. I'm so sorry. And that was the only cup. Very unfortunate. Uh, so, mm. anyway. Sorry, I... there was a run in with the apothecary and there was some tea involved. And. Two. Did so you hard. almost get poisoned with tea? Is that what you're telling me? And this is the point where Carrick. Who recaps has, and does it with his telepathy well kai just kind of does a scatter talk <laughs> which so that does. all of the which means all the details get communicated directly into your head where people aren't listening can i res- is this a one-way thing or is this a you cannot respond this way i do not have that kind of telepathy i can just talk into your head which I will say while you are all having this, Jules enthusiastically also recounts and then gets scared. And you can see Jules occasionally turning back and being like, yes, I know. Um, And then eventually being like, okay, I get it. I need to go get some rest. And then going upstairs and going to bed. You can hear bickering um, amongst themselves coming from. One-sided bickering. Yes, one-sided bickering coming. (laughs) We hear uh, one side of the conversation. We know there's several more, but... Yes, you just hear the one-sided bickering. That is a very odd girl. Well, um... Hmm, shall we converse in the garden? Oh, and I have her ashes. And oh. the clarification of the holy woman's it's in the jar of dirt. Just in case. You are a singular individual. Calypso, yes. Um, Well, I think we should talk somewhere. Perhaps that's, you know what? It doesn't matter. We can talk in here. It's fine. She'll listen to us either way. It's (laughs) true. She sneaks up on you out of nowhere. Yes, she she, she has crying magic. She was watching us the whole time. Uh, There's a whole cabal of them here. That's perhaps a rude word to use, but there's there's a number of them. Apparently, they had a run in. They all moved here together. The they is a bit vague. I'm not even sure if that. There's something odd about Dora. Many odd things, really. But um, yeah, she uh, she said that you know she suggested we move along if we didn't want to get murdered. So you know. Just thought I'd pass on that message. Personally, I don't think I can move along. Um, also, sorry, just playing back thoughts I had, staring at Carrick. Uh, you said this woman got very fixated on the lock that we left and then disappeared. And you guys didn't really think to go after that lock, try and cut her off, because she, she almost certainly was going after it. Right? We were more focused on the child. Oh, that's fair enough. But too late now. I'm pretty, I mean, she must have made a mad dash for it. Unless she was also disintegrated. Were there a pile of ashes on the floor? We should go no. check. I have... Our friendly land. Who you have told us is more than she seems. Told us of other individuals who, like her, were nice, could be trusted, kind. Mm -hmm. Is it not worth considering that these individuals are Dora's colleagues? And that these same powers may be the three individuals that this Jack or Jack told us of. So, 
certainly possible. And if that is two, who is the third? Is it the baker's wife? Or Leah spoke of her young sister? She another? Or have we not been seen Delphi and we've been seen what was her name? Bella? Only looking like Delphi. That's a good question, Carrick. So, the next question is, how do we pare down that list? You've not As... much time. Oh, Dora, lovely for you to join us. Her voice is simply echoing. And you tell much us, time. Dora. Oh, did you tell your friends that we're not backing down? I have no need to tell them. They're well aware you're not going to back down. It is only what's left of my heart that I bothered to try to warn you. You seem like good folk. I'm going to reach into my bag and open up the jar, mm -hmm. like discreetly, and poke at the heart and listen for any owl pain. You should really stop doing that. You're going to give the baker a heart attack. Just checking. It's fine. And I screw the, <laughs> I screw the jar, the lid back on the jar. Also, I was near lying when I said his wife is kind. She's just kind. And tell us this, Dora. If all we want is that Arlena and Vizjak live in, can find peace in the afterlife, is that something we can do? Leaving you and your friends alone, bringing some form of vengeance or justice, whatever that means, to. Then you'd need to take the one responsible for their deaths to the grave. That kind of pain and suffering can only be let go when it comes to a close. And if we, for instance, visited that upon the mayor, would that be enough? Or are you and your friends just as responsible? Oh, now, not all of us are that responsible. There's one, but I can't give you the answer. The mayor's but a pawn. That's all I'll give you. Games are not my thing. And why are you playing one? She is I'm not only a her sister. friend is. And what about the little girl? Are you really okay with how that's turned out? This little girl murdering people? Clearly out of her mind. Well, that's not my game to play. Not yet. Technically, I don't think the little girl. I mean, not anymore. You're astute. I reach into my bag again and I start unscrewing the jar. What are you, I just <laughs> really slaps your hand. What are you doing? Like, just, God. just checking. You already checked. Well, are we sleeping? 
<laughs> or are we investigating some more? I do not think we will pry jewels from this house tonight. She's seen too much. There is very, very loud snoring. It's important children get their sleep anyway. Ganon Jewels. I have one last question for you. Last one. I won't give you any more. Will we be safe in your home one more night, regardless of what tomorrow brings? Under my watch, yes. Did her accent just drop intentionally? Yep. I'm going to insight check that just because as much as one can a voice. Yeah. Go for it. 19. I got a natural 20. I'm just so insightful. <laughs> Jeez. Umbrelloculus dice. <laughs> they know the story. Know. Um. Yeah, no. That's a voice change. That does not sound like it's coming from a tiny halfling woman. Um. It's, I mean, let me ask you this. Specifically, what question are you wanting answered with an insight oh, check? Oh, I'm, like that? I, my insight check is, do I believe that genuinely under my protection, you'll be safe for a night? That's it. Yes. That's all I'm trying to garner. And, and I will say, Sophia, especially, like, you believe this voice. Because when you were being talked to earlier, it was genuine of, like, if you don't want to die, you should probably go. Um, this voice is being honest. Yeah. I guess what I want, what I would like insight into, and maybe insight isn't really the correct skill, is, like, what creature is this with like having the the scene like it, is she like changeling is there like some sort of like mm, do i have like a vague... that's a really good she... insight check too uh, yeah i i don't t to be fair i don't know if insight is the right skill for that though i would say we can keep your role okay let's make this a history history or arcana okay um Let's see. Uh, it's the same either way. It's a plus four, so that would be 24. So after hearing the voice change, after seeing the eyes shift, after like all the magic the stuff. vibes, and it's in this moment, Sophia, as you hear this voice change suddenly, and you begin looking around the house. There are house plants everywhere. There are vines strung on hooks all throughout the home. Very nice. Overgrown, even. It dawns on you in this moment. This is a hag. My people. Well, not my people, but yeah. But this my is a hag. People, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. and hags come in threes. Ooh. But if she wasn't part of it. Well, I mean, technically, they sometimes don't. So, like usually they will stay apart from each other but unless they absolutely have to out of necessities and some like depends on which kind of hag like so True. some hags do Eric not doesn't up, know some so do. <laughs> daniel is keeping his mouth shut oh. which cantrips did i take did i take no i did not take that today. uh <laughs> You're trying to see if he had message, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I was. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> like, did I take that? No. No, I can't. I mean, I will say with all of those high rolls, it's very obvious. There are, like, if there's, like, a doily or something, you could easily find, like, some, like, oh, essentially what would be the equivalent of pen and paper on a napkin. Um, mm -hmm. If you were so inclined to communicate in this fashion. 
down. I mean, I suppose I could try. <coughs> hmm. Okay, what's what are the chances? I'm just gonna okay. Hmm. I'm like, what are the chances she doesn't know Elvish? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. No idea. What language is the tag though? Um. Hmm. Didn't know hags took lovers. Interesting. Were they always hags? Or hags made? I don't know. So you say that out loud? I just, yeah. Mm hmm. What do you think? Get your rest. You'll need it. Don't come back here after you leave tomorrow. It won't be safe for you. And I won't be here. Thank you for your hospitality. Yes. You're just lucky you met me first. Or perhaps that we met you second. There's no reply. Well, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. We have decisions to make in the morning. Indeed we do. But I suppose until then, we should pretend to sleep while we think about all the implications of this, what do you say? Perhaps we take watches. For some I... reason, I don't doubt her word, but uh, there are too many moving pieces. Fair enough. I will happily take first watch. I am not ready for sleep. The window bursts open. Oh, good. And there's just a gust of wind that blows through. Kai, there is something about this breeze that reminds you of a dream. You feel confirmed in the direction that you're moving. This is the call that you heeded. Now, Sophia, with this gust that breezes past you, you hear this and one more. Then rest. This and one more, then rest. What? Are you sure you haven't been poisoned? Granny Sophia just like casually slaps you. Never you mind. As said, I think I'm not the only one who hears voices. No one else does. Mm. This is a very talkative party. <laughs> very chatty. But Kai, as you hear that and you look over to Sophia. You hear the snoring coming from upstairs, and you look across at Carrick. Three. There's something about three. You have a good feeling in your stomach. You might have stumbled onto what you're looking for. Maybe there's a way. There's something here. You're not certain. There's something. But for the first time since you've left home, there's this fire in your chest. You feel emboldened. Something is right. It's just that gut feeling. 
that you have that sitting here, even in this very tenuous <laughs> situation. While everyone seems concerned and questioning right now, you have no question. <laughs> you know what you're doing. The window closes. What do you do? You all adjourn. Oh, yes. When I touched Granny Sophia, mm -hmm. did my hand touch touch her or did it touch past through or not too much? Was it actually touching, making physical contact with what I see to be perceptive, what I perceive to be this little old lady? With Granny Sophia, yes. Okay. Just, just checking. I just want to double check with a few things. That's, yes. that's, that's one of them. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not secretly, I'm no, I'm just an old lady. <laughs> just, just, yeah, making yeah. Sure. just making yes. sure. But yes, you are, you all know, at least for the night, you're safe. You adjourn to rest and keeping watch. Granny, yeah. I'll, if you're taking the first watch, I'm taking the last watch. And Granny takes out um, an oil lamp and she sort of runs a finger along the side and then she disappears. And to your perspective, she disappears. To her, she's now inside a little, a small room um, that has random detritus, and on the wall is a portrait of her looking much younger and a young man, and she sort of goes over to it, puts a hand, says, this is one more than rest, <laughs> maybe, and then goes to sleep. And that is where we're going to take a quick five minute break. And then we're going to come back and then we're going to sacrifice Jules to the hag that is upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that checked out. Yeah, 100%. Kidding, kidding, Shelly. Um, okay, but we'll be right back in five. Do the thing, come back. Let's get into this and see which path they follow. Okay, so after this tenuous conversation with Dora, um, re ultimately revealing in some way, shape, or form that Dora's likely a hag of some sort, you take your rest for the night, uh, taking shifts to keep watch because, I mean, you're still in an odd situation, but these watches do go peacefully. Um, you again if at any point any of you look out towards the fountain at the center of the town you will see the ghost of arlena weeping into the well but beyond that it's much the same as the previous night also hi ronin <laughs> and so you you awake to a quiet house There is no clanking downstairs. There is no smell of fresh cooked foods. No tea. But you're at peace. The people outside are beginning to make their way around. You do see the mayor making his way down the street, greeting business owners. You see the same vendors as before. You see the school kids marching off. But the morning is yours. Um, before leaving, <clears throat> I want to poke around. Mm -hmm. I just want to look and see if there's anything that I might find interesting to take with me. 
Roll that for might it. be in the possession of this person. Okay. Uh, roll investigation. Anybody who does anything similarly, uh, do so. Gosh, my investigation. I want to look at the pictures, like, and see if I can get a sense of her life. I'm just mm-hmm. curious. Okay. What sort of personal things she's kept, not for stealing, just to know who she was. Yeah. I'm making us breakfast again. Okay. Very kind. 17 on investigation. Okay. All right. Uh, Go ahead and tell me, whoever's making investigation checks, tell me. If you're looking through pictures, do the same. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. Let me see them. So with that 17 investigation, as you begin prowling through the house, um, I will first say you immediately open up a closet. Hanging in this closet amongst moth-eaten robes and other things, is a bright red cloak with gold trim embroidery. And on the front of it, uh, as the cloak comes together at the front, Kai, it appears to almost make somewhat of a doorway. And because I am more than well aware of your arcane knowledge is this is a do you want to make a bet of what it is or um this is a cape of the mountaback i knew it you've got your cape which makes sense because she's like Mm -hmm. i will say yeah. Interesting. yeah. Furthermore, Very interesting that she's not holding, that she's not wearing it right now, and that it's just almost here. like a hint. Um, <laughs> uh, I will say, as you continue, you will find, as you continue through the house, it's it's knickknacks. It's not much, but on one shelf in particular, there's a figurine that sticks out to you. It is this obsidian black horse. Something about this figurine catches your eye. It's set up there with like the little porcelain cutesy, little cats and puppies, but this one sticks out to you. And as you touch it, you can feel it in your hands. There's something about this. And again, for brevity's sake, this is a figurine of wondrous power. And yes, this is the obsidian steed. I will also say you find two basic health potions just in the cabinet. Again, there are multiple hints. (laughs) As you're looking through these, it almost seems purposeful. You continue to find things that say, go away. Um, But you do find this. Sophia, Mm. as you look through the pictures and you look across, they're all of Dora and this supposed life. But it seems as you continue to look, they seem very staged. They don't seem to have any depth. But when you were having this conversation with Dora, this was real. That was a real heartbreak that you felt. There was common ground there. You don't see evidence of it here. But you do eventually smell this beautiful scent of food coming from the kitchen. As you all come downstairs, Jules is still bickering, but coming down, getting ready to eat nonetheless. Have you been snooping about as well? 
are just looking at their personal things, mostly the pictures. We had to talk about life, but it doesn't seem like those parts of the life that we talked about she kept. Shame. Well, she also hasn't kept this. Hmm? Well, she also hasn't kept um, this cloak or these potions. Oh, look at this. And I'm going to show you the uh, the little figurine of the horse. It's a horse. Yes, a real horse. Oh, I think I've seen one of those before. This is like a command word situation, right? You say, oh, God. Figure Please out what... don't say that it's... What was it? Fuck. Do you remember? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was fu- Yeah, it was. It was. I think it was fucker. Fucker. Well, like they like <laughs> put it into two words, so it wasn't like exact, but yeah. how you had to say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Memories. Yeah. <sighs> uh, yes. Derek starts to serve a very similar breakfast as he did the day before: a elven mushroom and uh, cured sausage risotto with other veggies rolled up in these fried leaves and starts to distribute. Well, your discoveries, do they help our uh, decision and our path for today? Well, all right, let's review what we know. There are three well, we think that there were, we saw three. Three was involved with this Jack's death. Hags tend to come in threes. Dora says she wasn't involved, I believe her. Sort of. I mean, but she, she did pretty much say it was her friends who did it. She said there was one that was responsible. Right. The mayor's a puppet. We know that Alvina is probably involved. So perhaps she's one of... No, Arlina was not involved. She was... Oh, sorry, not Arlina. Uh, uh, Leah. 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 Leah Grimm. Is a likely candidate, yes. Perhaps her sister, the child Bella, but we know there were... According to Jack, there were three entities... Mm-hmm. And then and the child. So right. that's four total. Oh well, maybe that. Maybe the old, um, uh, now dusty woman. And I shake the jar. The one that I have. Yeah. Well, she said that was the baker, right? No, 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 no. The ashes from the holy woman. Maybe the holy woman was one of them as well. I don't. Well, that's an interesting one, because if Dora wasn't involved, and if this person was genuinely misled, perhaps, then again, I don't know. The child was also given or had a powerful scroll of powerful destructive magic, which was likely given to them by a powerful magic wielder. Perhaps a member of this triad. And as Kai is fond of pointing out, is it a child? Dora wasn't what she seemed. Perhaps this isn't the daughter at all. Perhaps it's not even her being possessed. Perhaps it's just someone taking her likeness. Indeed, which I believe, as you say, Kai has pointed out, and when we first met this entity, several of us questioned whether it even was a child. So where do we go? Well, do we go back to the apothecary? Do we go back to the house see if she didn't get that lock? Spe- uh, whether we find the lock or not, do we speak to the l- locksmith, Gerard Way? <laughs> Is that me? Is that his name? Gerard Way. <laughs> yes, was. Gerard Way exists in Ecreom and is a locksmith. 
you because oh, you have to read I my don't heart. know why, but it has just puts me it has an uneasy feeling throughout my entire body just hearing that name here. Yes. I don't know why. I can't I do we also pawn that we he know he most likely is. The mayor has a price to pay. Right. And well, something convinced him to do this. That's true. He's, I he's, don't think he needed much prompting, but he is a pawn. Perhaps he can... He may give us a lead. It's true. All I right. mean, if you look out the window, you do see him making his rounds. You're feeling very self-important. This. Uh, he is right there. We could just walk up to him. Uh, I'm laughing, but at the same time, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I do not disagree. I will say the way I would ask him questions at this point will probably draw attention. Oh, I, I'm, that is, that's probably why I'm laughing, to be honest. I don't know if there's really any subtle way to be, um, so why did you get this woman murdered? Well, you are an abandoned house, not to be that GM, but. <laughs> well, may as well, yeah. but time is short. House. And it's not like they don't know what we're up to anyway, whoever this mysterious they is who are intent on killing us if we get too close to the truth. Well, and I will say, as you're looking around the house now, the house plants seem to be dying. Hmm. Yeah, she seems to have flown the coop. I do have two pretty bubbles. By the way, Carrick, would you like a horse? Well, it is a shadowy a horse that matches you, kind of. How does it work? I'm not terribly knowledgeable of the arcane. D d is there a, a word on it? Or is there, do we know the activation for it? Just for fun's sake, I will say, if you look on the wall, there is a painting of a valiant black steed adorned in red velvet scarves and tapestries. And at the bottom right corner, there is the signature. Ooh, try that. I think this is what it looks like when it's fully big. Yeah, just don't say the word inside. Would you like to know the name painted at the bottom right corner? As you get closer to this painting, it's a very, very old painting. It's starting to crack. It looks hundreds of years old. I see. What does it say? And what language? In Sylvan. It just says, she who rests in the willows. Well, I am familiar with the tongue. Uh, I will say from Daniel saying this, not Carrick, it may be more useful to one of you than it is to me, simply because I already move fast and a few other things like that, but I will take it if nobody else wants it. I mean, I, could, I, the person who must have old and must travel all the time, could use a horse, maybe. I don't know. Then again, perhaps. Horse? I was going to give you the potions, <laughs> but <yes. laughs> also not a bad idea because Granny's one of the people who doesn't have healing ability, and you and I do potentially. Yes, yeah. You should hang on to these then, and I give you the potions and the horse. Oh. Do you know we what We could also are? give one potion to Jules, if we want. Jules yeah. would probably need one of them, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. that All right, way, what when they have a heart attack, they can... She won't have a heart attack! <laughs> <laughs> so what, what exactly did I get? Do I know? How many uh, you? They... You have, it's, uh, it is a figurine of wondrous power, and this is the obsidian steed. Okay. And, uh, just a regular healing potion. All right. There were two, so split in one and one. 
It allows you to summon a nightmare. Yes. That's what it does. Ooh, I have that miniature. That is so cute. Uh, but it doesn't fight other than to defend itself. But it's real useful as a steed, and there's a 10% chance it will fuck with you. You're welcome. That's fun. Love you. <laughs> um, with this, though, you do hear a knocking on the front door. Hmm. Well, I'm happy. Granny will go open it. There is a plump young woman uh, covered in flour with a basket full of muffins. Oh, hello. Um, is Dora around? I know, I'm afraid she's out. Not sure when she'll be back. Is she gone again? Seems so. I, does she go often? Only occasionally. But, well, I brought... She usually likes to come to the bakery every morning and she didn't come and I know sometimes she's got guests so I thought I would bring them over and... I take it you're the baker's wife. She did mention that you were an incredibly kind young woman. I do appreciate that coming from her. She's very kind. Yes, I, she's been very kind to us and I stay here. Has she been gone long? Her plants are dying. She was here last night. Very... She usually this... takes quite good care of them. I do wonder if she might have left a little more permanently. Not to worry, dear. They've been here since I can remember. They? Well, this inn. There used to be more of them. I think husband passed or something. I don't ask too many questions in this town. So thanks for the raid. Hi. What? Well, um, I can see why it seems uh, this town's gone through some rough times recently. Yes. It's not been fun. My brother went missing about a week ago. I'm sorry to hear that. What was his name? Bertrand. Bertrand. But he's he's a bit of a rough about and a drunk, but. He was a good man. He was just young. We've heard that young men miss going missing from this town is been something that has been happening for some time with increasing frequency. They blame a curse, and I don't know if that's true. It seems to be dumb dumb young men making dumb decisions. Too much of the drink, I think. And I think the people in this town just like to make excuses for bad behavior. That it must be some curse that ill falls on them. But I do hope that he returns. Granny puts a sort of gentle hand on her shoulder. I hope he returns too. Tell me, um... Did Dora have any particular friends in this town? We'd love to tell them uh, that she's headed out, seems. Friends is a strong word. She would have tea with Leah. Um, she made her way about town, kind of picking up the rumors. Um, um, she... I mean, she starts to talk to me every day, and... Even though Hemia is kind of true, she would come to Hemia and she would stop over at the, what's it called? Um, where they make met the, the blacksmith. blacksmith. Yes. Interesting. I wonder what she did at the blacksmith. Honestly, the blacksmith is a bit of a motor mouth and tends to tell ah. everybody what the men are doing. That would do it. She did seem to like collecting rumors. Yes. Well, and he tells, he's not one of secrets. Um, if you've spent time with him, most everyone knows. And knows if anybody else has. I hope he hits his hand with a hammer. <laughs> what 
spread some nasty rumors then, has he? Oh yes, about many women and their activities with local men. It's a small town. Everybody knows everybody and everyone was there, but nobody was there. I think I catch you drift and perhaps some young woman was um, burned at the stake because of it, perhaps. Oh, that one. Oh, that was all because of, well, the matron was the one who told us of the suspicion and Supposedly, the mayor was the one that pointed her on to it, so I... But to be honest, his wife is a bit of a jealous bitch, so... Mm. We keep hearing that! She's not a kind woman, but... He's not but a kind one man. that... But a woman that... Dora would sometimes spend time with. Yes, because if you if you are good in with him, yeah... Um, Obviously, then you're good in with the mayor, and if Hemya is on your good side, then it's that dynamic. Mm-hmm. Where Does are you she from? like muffins? I don't know that she likes much of anything. Uh, where are you from? Because I want to leave. Oh, we don't get well, outsiders often. I'm from a bit of everywhere, to be honest. I've been wandering since I'm 15, and as you can guess, <laughs> that was a long time ago. That looks like a long... Oh, it's all right, dear. I said it first. Also, no offense, but I've never met a dragonborn or a wet person before. <laughs> a wet person. <laughs> Moist. We prefer the word. Moist. Nasty. <laughs> really? Well, I'll be sure to refer to you as moist whenever I get the opportunity, Kai. Thank you. And how, how I just realized we haven't introduced ourselves. I'm Sophia. This is Kai Lip. So this is Carrick and this is Jules. Molly. Sorry. I'm a little. I got kicked in the head. What kicked in the head? As a kid. Yeah. So. By, by what odd. Yeah. Oh, I got kicked in the head by a horse when I was. I'm so sorry. And she like lifts up, and there's like a scar. Oh. I'm not always quick on the uptake, but I think that's why Dora liked me. Since she appears to be gone. Whatever you have suffer, suffered, you appear. One of the kindest faces I think any of us have seen in a long time. Thank you. My husband often says the same thing. Well. He is a lucky man. Um, do you want to- And Sophia does not say this, but she thinks even if someone, another woman is holding his heart right now. <laughs> just, just thinks that, doesn't say it. But, um, would you like these muffins, then? Oh, that would be lovely. Can we offer you some payment? Oh, no, they're complimentary. I just, like I said, I like, there's not many people in this town that'll talk to you much anymore. And so Dora was just, hopefully is good company. She hands it over. I should probably get back before my husband lights his beer to fire again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have backed away during this conversation and I open the jar. What are you doing? No! Cut that out! Okay. Okay. She is fine. Across the way, you do hear a coughing coming from inside the bakery. (laughs) The the granny takes her staff and she's like, Cut that out! That is somebody's heart beating heart! Not that it lost him now, obviously, but and I can't exactly put it back into him. You don't need to cause it undue stress, though. You do see her scamper off back into the bakery, and you can see her immediately going to check um, on him. Um, 
But yeah, you have a basket of muffins and a little bit more insight. I mean, should I give it to them? I... GM, one clarification. No. In the stories we've heard of men going missing in particular, mm -hmm. and then as time went on, people regardless, men, women, all yes. of the above, We also heard that as the time has progressed, people have gone missing and then returned. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the baker has ever gone missing. That is an interesting question. Because if that is his heart, Lord. We can't be for certain. We can be certain it is linked to him. <laughs> Why are you in denial about this guy? I, because I like this and I want to keep it. Yeah, I feel I like thought. I should return it. Yes, you feel that way for a reason. It's called a conscience. It's good that you have one. <clears throat> yes. Again, I ask, do we ask some questions of the mayor and his wife? Oh, well. Or do we return to the house, see if there are chains still there, and speak to this gossip of a blacksmith? My patience wears thin. I do not know what the choice is to make, but I wish to take action. I mean, yes. I feel like the lot we left it for so long i would be shocked if leah hadn't already nabbed it since she felt convinced that would reveal the whole thing but he was we don't need the lock to ask him questions about the lock and who had it made and what he knows about it but i do think and you're that's correct i also think we may get more directly to a confrontation, perhaps, if we go to the mayor and his wife. I don't know why, but I... I just have the snagging suspicion about the wife. Because the mayor is a puppet, and Dora said that the wife is one of the only people who could get him to fall in line. She's a jealous type. The rumors about Arlena. And the mayor. So that's motivation. Really, she seems like so far the only person who might have the motivation. Because nobody's really had any direct problem with Arlena as a person, right? The story we heard was that the mayor perhaps had made unwanted advantages to her and that she had said no. that somehow this might have motivated him to concoct all of this. But it seems that was only part of the story and a version of it, not all of it. Well, so we, I think, so I guess, do we want to see if there's any extra bit of information we can glean before we go into the more confrontational route with the mayor? There is still right there, I take it? Oh yeah, just out there. I won't lie. I am more comfortable with confrontation than I am with gathering knowledge. But as you say, there is still much we do not know. But we are running short of time. So if we wish more knowledge, we should do that now, because the confrontation is inevitable. It's true. While you're sitting there, a tall, very pale blonde woman comes up to the mayor, as the mayor has been sitting in one area for a little too long. As you're looking, it is some sort of seamstress and immediately looking over 
you pick up on the vibe very quickly that this woman comes up, grips his arm, and you can see just this tension of the seamstress as she backs away. And you can see this glare coming from this woman down at the mare, who, by the way, she is over six foot tall. And this is a, I mean, fairly tall for a halfling, but still a halfling. There so, seems to be words exchanged. The mayor is a halfling? Yeah, like he's like, yeah. yeah. He's like, I mean, for a halfling, he's rather tall. So it's just, he's probably, there's definitely, I wouldn't say like looking at him, like you can tell that he is of halfling, but it's probably not all. He's maybe sitting at like four foot five, which is still fairly tall for her. Yeah, that'd be a very tall halfling, but he might be half halfling or something like but you can see this stern. Um, but with that, how sneakily, like, are you guys just staring out a window or is it passing glances that you are observing the situation? I'm just staring. Doorway. I have no sense of propriety. Is the door still open or are you looking out a window? Honestly, I suppose I was picturing we were just standing in the doorway talking about what we're doing. I, yeah. I, to me, we were, if we were having this kind of conversation, we probably hadn't walked out yet because I don't yeah. think we'd be doing that in the street. So True. it'd be inside, uh, but the, the door's window. open. <gasps> oh, okay. You, you would have closed the door. Okay, yeah, I, but with when she left, if, I would have. If you're just bold faced staring, though, you will catch an immediate glare right at you from the woman. Mm hmm. Granny ways. Yep. No no response. Looks down and begins to drag the mare back towards the nicer home that is the only nice one and very apparent. I take it if we want to talk to the mayor and his wife, we should go right now. Very well. Yes, we could take the muffins and use it as an excuse to say hi. I will follow your lead in this. Oh, good. <clears throat> so you march out after them? <laughs> yep. Okay. You make your way through town, pulling all kinds of looks uh, because you're walking out of the Daybell Inn and everyone can see inside that it's very dark inside. Um, but it's, you know, they see that it's dark outside, like inside, but they're not, I mean, it's not unusual, but you are unusual guests to be had at the Daybell. So you follow and you arrive at a very nice house. Uh, this one is actually well-built, well-maintained, not decaying. Uh, there are vibrant bushes in the front. Um, there's a massive tree in the backyard. Like there's actual yarding, uh, small fountains, two-story. What condition is it in? Does it appear to be deteriorating? Like not at all. Parts of the town are? Not even a little. So we didn't catch up to them. They they got back home before. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like they turned a corner and we're gone. But you do. I mean, there are lights on inside. Shave and a haircut. Eventually, there is a response, and a slender, masculine figure with no hair at the top of its head, but a very pointed white beard um, and it's kind of a, a red velvet robe reaches and opens the door oh Some before man. I did it I would have um, tried to like um, lower my shirt a little bit and you know right. since yeah. he this is true hmm. um, the, door, the door opens how may I help you this is oh, not the mayor. Oh, damn. Uh, hello. We are travelers, and we just wanted to pay a call on the <clears throat> mayor of this fine town. Yeah. Hoping we could say hello, bring this basket of muffins. Mr. Wayleaf is in his office. Let me see if he'll have guests. Oh, oh thank you. No, that's no need. And I try to, like, blow past him and go inside. 
Okay. Um, go ahead and make a dexterity check. <laughs> check. Uh, dex, dex save? Or just uh, check. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting thing. I want to see how this goes. Oh. Oh, no. It's not good. It's a nine. It's a nine. Well, they rolled an eight. And they have oh. a bonus because they're old. So you both, like, kind of stumble. And there's this moment of, like, uh, before you just right past. Seeing that, Carrick will just palm the door and uh, and this is just... a guest. <laughs> and then I'll just sort of hobble behind and sort of look at, I apologize for my companion's ill manners and then just follow. I never. Well, I do, so. Hmm. Mr. Whaley, <laughs> and you make your way and it's you can immediately see into this foyer area that opens up into a small library. But of course you do see a candle lit, like candlelight coming through. The curtains are all drawn at the back side of the house with long velveteen curtains, completely blacked out apart from the candlelight coming from that room. And if you enter in, you will find a rather rotund gentleman, slicked back ponytail hair, very nice clothing, sitting behind a desk with parchment spread about. Who the hell are you? Oh, you're the weirdos that have been staying over at the Daybell. Oh, well, it's very nice to meet you, Boris. Uh, we brought You're not you going to stay long, are you? Oh, just as long as we need to. I mean... I don't think that shall be very long. Hmm. You're causing a stir. Everyone's talking, so... Well, it's a small town. Don't travelers always cause a bit of a stir? Especially some as colorful more, as we are. Some more than others as he like veers over to look at Kai. <laughs> Which I will say, go ahead and make a charisma check with advantage. <laughs> okay. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> He's a pig. Uh, uh huh. Got a dirty 20. <laughs> First roll. Hey. Okay. Okay, yes. That's the. <laughs> 20 for my for boy. Uh, do have a seat if you uh, are tired from traveling, though. There's I like will sit in, in his chair. There's, there's like one chair. <laughs> Can I sit in his chair? Is he standing? Oh, he's sitting in his chair. <laughs> oh, well, damn. Well, I'm not sitting in this chair then. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. But there is like one chair on the other side. As oh, he motions thank you. to sit down. I would give I would I, I would give it to you. I would <laughs> give it to Granny Sophia. <laughs> you could sit across his desk if you want to go that route. On the desk? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Spencer is, um, is Henya away? Spencer just leans over and glares in. Yes. And then just kind of away. <clears throat> so what words were we wanting to have? It's... Well, I suppose some people might think a situation like this would call for a uh, delicacy, but really I think we're not the party for that. So the truth is, for whatever reason, we have been called to this village by the spirit, by a restless spirit, and our leader. Ah, your ghost chasers of some kind. I get it. Looking for a good story, feeding off the plight of our people. Is this what? It's more like we're here to put people to rest. We don't really care about the story. Mm. They're dead. Mm, yes. It's afraid death doesn't have quite the end. Not quite as final as some people might expect. And technically, the husband is still alive. He's not dead, or at least that's what everyone says, that he's just ran off. Right? insight check all of you because right that's the story that he didn't die yeah, yeah. and yeah. yes he just said they're dead 25 18 total 12 i caught it but i didn't catch it no. <laughs> carrick and sophia both 
there's like this look of like, oh shit. Carrot, very knowingly, he knows that he has stumbled. Great. I assume his desk, there are writing implements, pens and the like, right? Oh yeah. I'm gonna move forward, pick up a pen, and then I'm gonna jab it into his hand. Ooh, and with my make... other hand, I am going to grab him by the throat and lift him up. Um, attack roll. Oh, Carrick, you are the violent sort, I should be. <laughs> uh, first attack roll, uh, like unarmed strike, I assume. Mm hmm. It's okay. Uh, 24. Okay. Yeah, you, you jab it into his hand. You done jabbed him, and yeah. you definitely grip him by the throat because he rolled a three. Yeah, well, that was and... the contested on the. So. Oh yeah, uh -huh. and yeah, that that do That's the just, same for yeah, athletics. You, you got him. Uh, what color he, blood is it? Oh, it is very red. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, you Fine. grip him and put him up, which he's quite heavy for such a small. Um, but you note that Spencer, Sophia, you and Kai both will notice in this moment that Spencer pokes in and they just kind of back out does not intervene you are going to tell us everything that happened and why you had Arlena Dartu burned when you knew she was not the witch you're going to tell us who put this idea in your head and everything you know and if you do not you may not answer to my questions but you will answer to her and I past disguised self, and I make myself look like Armina Dutu. Uh, intimidation check ah. with advantage. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. By the way, Jules oh, yeah. is standing at the back, cowering. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jules is at the back, like... <laughs> Looking for red because balls coming around. Intimidation <laughs> is the only charisma skill I am proficient in. Ah. That is a total of 24. Ooh, nice. Oh, sorry, 22, 22. I, I'm, where do you want me to be? I can't. <clears throat> and I let it go just enough that he can make a little bit of noise, but only a whisper. <clears throat> to be honest, it was a bit foggy. Find clarity. Which part? <clears throat> Why? Couldn't you meet your wife? With those insight rolls from earlier, even Kai will pick up on the fact when you say wife, he looks at you like. Mm. Um. I'm sure by now you've already picked up on the story everyone talks about. A little affair that never really happened. No. That was just the blacksmith running his mouth. Hemia didn't like it. Yes. And because of that, you had the woman burned alive. Hemia came to me with evidence that she was not to be trusted and that she was performing witchcraft. She'd made her daughter ill. <clears throat> He's lying. And the reason you knew that this Jack was already dead. As he kind of grows pale white. I don't know why I did it. it was why you did what? We took him. We. I don't know who. I can't remember. We took him, and we kept him here. And then when he burned down the house, you put him there with it. I don't know how to explain it. I don't remember much. It's very foggy. And when I came to, 
from all of this. I had to... I had to hide it. And he was evidence. So, after Arlena's burning, I took him and then delivered... I encouraged the burning of the house. And what of the daughter, then? I don't know anything about her. I squeeze a little harder. I really don't. I did, I thought she was dead. And what haunts your city now? What takes your people? What do you know of that? I don't. I'm not sure. What does your wife know of that? I'm not sure. As you can see, just fear in his eyes. Granny Ask any more questions you have of him. Granny will put a hand on your arm, the arm that's choking him, Tara. I think that's enough. I think he gets the point. I do have a question for you, though. And it is about your wife. I think that's where all of our heads are at right now. I lower what? him down, I'm I here. don't release. <laughs> when did she move to town? How long have you known her? I'm just bad with dates. I mm. and he seems genuinely confused, like he cannot recall. Interesting. Hmm. How long have you been married? Surely you remember that. I. Th I d Just over a year, I think. Maybe. Just a year. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe. I... You can so see blood begin to drip out of his ear. Like, Eric, you didn't do that. I did not. What is happening? Using the thrall and the power of something else. One indeed. I and throw him take... against the wall. Uh, do do make an attack with that, and then I would like you. you yeah, do that. We're gonna do that. Do you want it as an athletics check or an unarmed athletics strike? Athletics would be perfect. Twenty-three. He goes unconscious. <laughs> Just. Did you kill him? He's not dead. Did he? Well, he is bleeding out, and his hand has a pen through it. He's uh, not bleeding out. <laughs> his here? hand is gushing blood. I'm just kidding. I went but... through the web of his fingers. It just hurts. It's not. To... <laughs> You're not going to exsanguinate from that. Well, whatever's well, happening with his ear. Uh, well, I'm feeling very suspicious of the wife. I assume you all are feeling. Mm. Ooh, and we have free reign of the home now. Perhaps we tie this one up. The butler seems to have gone off. I don't think this... he liked being in the service of this one too much. Despite better, my better judgment, life. I'll do a medicine check to see if he's actually dying or. Uh, you know, I mean, you can walk up to him and see that he's just very unconscious. Great. Then I will I... tie him up. And can I take the pen out of his hand? Yeah. And put it into my bag? Yes. Okay. 
You now have a blood really Todd suck. <laughs> now, one last question. Do I gag him or do I tear out his lying tongue? Ooh. Well, obviously Can he's real it? slime, but no. Now, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I, this man is not a good man, but he clearly did things under the influence of No, that, but, but he is my husband. Oh, shit. Ah, uh, excellent. We were really seeking to speak to. <laughs> Before you stands a six foot one, slender figure, very harsh face, green eyes, white blonde hair. Would you say it's a familiar vibrant green? Yep. Especially to you. Yeah. Not decided not to change your eye color, I guess. What's the need? Tarek motions at the visage of he still looks like Arlena Dart too. So she is it you who is responsible for what happened to this woman? She was pretty. I drop it. I didn't see her in life. Thanks to Less you. So. Well, she made a mess of things. How? Wouldn't you like to know? I suppose it doesn't really matter, but we would like to know, yes. You're a funny group, you. Oh, that's for sure. Just like you, Leah, and uh, Dora, right? Just odd, an odd bunch. Although perhaps you three were more of a match set. Astute. It's not everyday mortals are that. Well, I'll give you that credit. I'm sure it didn't help that Dora opened her mouth. Yes? Oh, she did give us a couple hints here and there. Though she did not give you up, I'll, I'll tell you that much. That's good. That was uh, a bit of a deduction on that part. Smart. Although, I mean, I have to say, your house is the only one in town that isn't uh, blighted, so... That's money. Now! There's <laughs> no magic. And the blight that affects the rest of these lands? Oh, yes. I have nothing to hide from you. Because they're going to kill us, right? Oh, no. My job is done. Except for him. <laughs> what job is that? I'd rather you find out. Do, do we hear a small child coming? <laughs> you do not. I have you. one last question for you. Yes? The child who is eager to play games with us. Yes. She's prominent, isn't she? There's something is it special Delphi? about that one. Oh, yes. Or is it Bella? Why, yes. Y yes? Both. I am proud of that. I do enjoy this game she's playing. So, I can I'll just see, I, I can see Jules over, I don't, I don't like it at all. I can no. just imagine Shelby no, interjecting. No, I don't like this game. Nope, no, nope, no, nope. no. <laughs> Let me make this simple for you mortals. Come to her home. Our home. Leah's house over on the hill. 
Your answers are there. We're not scared of you. Clearly not. Should I? Yes, that's to be seen, isn't it? It is. You know what you're walking into. But if you want recompense for this poor young woman. And she just turns and starts to walk away. Mm. And I mean, if you want to save the fate of poor Delphi, is that it? You want to save an innocent child? stop their souls from suffering in the center of town. I do Even... ever enjoy that crying. Why? Harry's gonna unleash his breath weapon on her. Do it. Uh, make a DC 15 dexterity save for me. That is 21. That makes it. We will still take half. Ooh, that was nice, though. Uh, half of 16, so eight points of necrotic damage. Ooh, necrotic? Yeah. Because what the flames that emit from Carrick. Well, does are, she take necrotic pure... damage? She does. Okay. There is definitely some of the garments kind of wither. You are impressive. You are wise creatures. You know where I come from. A land of monsters. I am what the monsters fear. And I am what causes the nightmares in children for thousands of years. I am what causes the blight. I am what is bringing about the change, a shift but I do appreciate your efforts. Oh, please, I've dealt with worse creatures than you. There's this being in the ocean. Destroys more than just one little town. It took out my entire hunting party and most of the fleet with it. You, you are nothing. I'm going to leave before you make me angry. Why? The fun's just getting started, isn't it? And I will point a finger at her and Eldritch Blast. <laughs> just determined to make this woman angry right here, right now. Why let them rally together when we can try and pick them off one by one? Do it. Yep. That's the natural 20. I mean, yes. I am. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm blocking the state. Oh, and we have that, that extra level, so. Hey. That's two blasts. Yep, you are at two blasts. Yes. Okay. By level five, you have two blasts. Yeah. Yeah. At level oh, six. Level five. As well. All right. Um, okay. So one of them is a seven, the other one's a 17 to hit. They both hit. Okay. Um, so that's 3d10. Do, I forget, do you roll double damage or do you? Uh, I think, didn't we just decide, did we decide we did, max? We, you. That's what you said when we started is okay. that yeah, max Yeah, just plus. max it. Max plus, let's do it. It's really max plus level. roll, all right. Um, oh, okay, interesting. So that is uh, 16 total damage. You hit Hemia with this blast. It does knock her shoulder back. Mm. Bring that energy. That's what I want to see. As she turns around and turns invisible. 
I'm going to chase after her, and I if I get within, well, actually, I would have still been within ten feet, so I can still see her. I mean, her you can still, things. yeah, you can still sense. And I mean, she books it. Yeah. Absolutely books it. I will a hundred percent try and tackle her with thirty-five okay. feet of movement. Give it a shot. Oh, what am I even, uh, an athletics check, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, that is a 21. Okay, yeah. I mean, you tackle. What looked like her. Mm-hmm. And you're holding something. before the invisibility wears off and you are hugging a scarecrow. An animated one still? Nope, just like a limp yeah. one. I like dolls too. Delphi. Gran Granny? Delphi? I just don't understand what's going on with you, to be honest. I like games. Games are fun. But your games are hurting people. Do you like hurting people? Sometimes. What about other times? No. And you just hear the voice. You don't see her anywhere. Delphi, we want to help you. But you can't. Why can't we help you? Because of Leah. What's Leah going to do? Or what is she doing? If I do bad, then Leah hurts me. So what we need to do is make it so Leah can't hurt you. And that's how we could help you. But you're small. Mm, yes. So are you. And yet, look at what you're able to do. And you begin to hear footsteps running. Like at the far end of the house and hear a side door open. Like she's running away? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't feel like running after the small child right now, I'm going to be honest. We know where they want us. We know where to find them. She said bring that energy. Why do they want to fight us? Hmm. We are messing up their town and their plans, she said, to take over everything, right? I suppose. This doesn't really make sense to me. We also all carry ties to something more than ourselves. Do not bother denying it, and I look at all of you. Perhaps the game for them will be taking that power from us. Yes, but could they? Could they take the powers imbued by your bond to your dead wife or the pact that I made? I I guess, can I make an arcana check to know if that's like a thing? <laughs> can they yeah, I mean, make an arcana check. I'm rolling so good tonight with my humble Oculus dice. <laughs> it's rare, <laughs> apparently. They serve well. Um, I, I do feel like I'm real much, but yeah, that's a 23. Arcana. No. Yeah. Not that, not that's documented anywhere. Yeah. At least not that you know of. I've never they heard are welcome like to that. try. I am done playing games. 
well then. Are there any preparations we want before we march into the lion's den? You begin to hear oinking from the other, like the other end of the room. There is a rather small but very rotund pig riding around in some velvet attire. That's a little funny. I'm not going to lie. We should take him to the butcher. No, no that's a little mean, don't you think? You don't think that this is enough? <laughs> Maybe we should take him and put him outside in the pig pen. Let him wallow around in the muck and mud and yuck. We have greater foes ahead of us. If we survive this, we can still take his life if we feel he needs to die. <gasps> Wait. I will cast Animal Friendship. Well, and then there's the question, if he deserves to die, do we deserve to take his life? <laughs> his life, no, but his dignity, yes. Uh, so yes, I cast Animal Friendship. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm convincing him that we mean him no harm. Uh, <laughs> and... Oh, wait, is his intelligence... Wait. Is, I mean, does he have his intelligence at this point, or pig intelligence? He's real dumb. Yeah, because uh, uh, if the beast's intelligence is four or higher, the spell fails. <laughs> Otherwise, the beast must make a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by me. He was already charmed by me before this. That's good. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll say that in general, the pig Boris is coming up and is already like sniffing at your heel. Oh. Okay, I'm going to get out a rope. You're coming with me. And I'm going to <laughs> tie a rope around his uh, little um, velvet collared shirt. And just in case for later, uh, I'm going to have him on a leash and take him with us. This is going to end up being really funny in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm yeah. hoping for that. Um... <laughs> So, I start walking. You start walking. Boris Pig in tow. Jules <laughs> is like in shock. Uh, I assume, <laughs> honestly, um, with all of this, you have a lot of the answers you were looking for, but you have a new question: Why this call to their home? Um, why the invitation? Hemia seemed exceptionally confident. Um, only for you to find that this scarecrow doll was another illusion. However, you know what you're doing. You have the path. And you're out for some motherfucking revenge. So, that is where we're going to end tonight's session. So, next session will not be our usual the seventh because people have stuff and things going on uh but do expect us back the 21st if anything changes check out the socials follow the red hair in because all updates will be on there you should follow us anyways because we have the ecreom expeditions coming up this next week um i don't know if we have halls of the mad king or if that's over but also check us out sometimes mondays and stuff too because if not doing that we do we do have Halls of the Mad King, because otherwise, you know, you can also catch Logan doing some homebrew stuff here. Um, as always, my name is Taryn, also known as Valruk across the socials. Follow me on there. Do the thing. I will be in the Ecrium Expeditions on Tuesday. On Monday, I will be over at the Initial Order on Vault, playing my redneck boy. Um, mm -hmm. I will also be next Wednesday over at Blackwater doing the DM Roulette, so that's the thing I'm doing. Follow me on the socials for those things. Yeah. Um, but uh shelby's not here but we love at wish warlock follow them for all the things that they do also super cool cool stuff conan and things over on the initiative order um and so next on that list of course is lizzie <laughs> hello i'm lizzie 
Donahue. You can find me at the Lizzie LD on social medias. Um, I have been very happy to be playing this game tonight. I'm very excited for the conclusion, uh, whatever, however that may go. And um, yes, I. You can also find me here on Tuesday nights for Agriom Expeditions. I will see you this Tuesday, hopefully, probably, barring my own technical difficulties because I'll be traveling, but I hope to see you there one way or the other. Daniel. Daniel Lieberman is my name, but I'm known by many just as Dragon. I am one half of Dragon Rock RPG Design, where along with my writing and design partner, Renee Beauregard, who you can catch playing with Taryn and Lizzie on the Acrium Expeditions, where he plays Perrin Hope Singer, the halfling bard. Renee and Probably I create. Get smited. So I mean, as somebody who loves Renee deeply, please do that. I'm always happy to see that happen. Renee and I together make supplemental material for Dungeons and Dragons 5e that you can use in your games. This includes subclasses, including the subclass that Taryn is playing in the Ecrium Expeditions, which we made in collaboration with Logan the Innkeeper here. We make subclasses, races, magic items, all kinds of things. Follow us on our socials at Dragon Rock RPG Design on Instagram, at Dragon Rock RPG on Twitter and Facebook. That's rock spelled R O C. There is no K, it's spelled like the giant mythical bird. Also on those socials, you can find our link tree with links to several of our DMs Guild releases, which are all free pay what you want documents. So please download them for free. Give them a rating and review if you like them. We want to know what you think so we can keep making new things that you will enjoy. We have a bunch of other things that we are currently working on, trying to get to the point of we're actually releasing them. We also love working with other members of the community. As I mentioned, we're often collaborating with Logan, the innkeeper here. We do consulting on other people's designs. We also do things by commission. So if you have an idea for something that doesn't exist in D&D, we'd be more than happy to make it for you. Check out our socials, follow everything Renee and I do in the world of TTRPGs and uh, collaborating with wonderful people like this. Yeah, and of course, April. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh my name is April Hill. You can find me at Stiletto underscore Assassin on Instagram and Stiletto DM on Twitter. And here, uh, playing Kylipso, the chaotic, very chaotic, water genasi uh, druid, uh, as well as every Monday night on the Initiative Order, where I'm the overseer for Vault 95, which is an actual play series of Once Upon a Time in the Wasteland, uh, which is the starter set, um, the starter set campaign by Modiface Entertainment, written by my friend Donathan. So uh, it's a lot of fun. We've got a few episodes left before the finale of that. So tune in to see what happens. Yeah. Um, we are going to be raiding Adventures Pack. Uh, so stick around for the raid. Spread the love from the red hair and. Go share a pint with them, you little buggers. You go do it. Join our Discord. Come do the stuff and talk to us. Make homebrew. Um, but also, you know, like, love each other and be respectful of people and stuff. Because, like, there's enough bullshit in this world. Like, we don't need it. You know? So, like, that's a thing. But much love. Have a good rest of your night. Spread that love. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>